What's great about guitar is it's such a, an emotional instrument. When a guitar player can really reach inside of you and like just trigger so many emotions, you know, that, that's, that makes a great player. Joanna Connor is one of the greatest blues rock guitarists today, but her rise to the number one Billboard blues album was anything but easy or quick. I was like, wow, it only took 40 years, but I... <laughs> back in the day when I was younger, there was some major labels sniffing around, whatever, it didn't happen. They were like, we don't know how to market you. You're too blues, you're too rock. And so I was, it was like three different major labels came and went. And then I kind of, in between, like just decided, well, I'm just gonna play music, whatever, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. While Connor has always enjoyed music, her first passion was dancing, not guitar. I was seven years old and all the girls in my neighborhood were going to take dance lessons and I wanted to. And I kept asking my mom and she was like, mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. And then one day I wake up, she goes, well, guess what? Instead of dance lessons, I bought you a guitar. Something that caught Joanna off guard. And I was like, a guitar? I was, you know, but it, she, my mother had some kind of uh, extraterrestrial wisdom or something, so, and that was started it. Connor started getting more serious with guitar at 14. I was born in Brooklyn, New York, but I grew up in Worcester, Massachusetts, and um, that's where I was at Worcester, Mass. And our first gig uh, was at the Sons of Italy Lodge. So our bass player's uh, family were members, and we played there every Friday night. After a trip to Chicago at age 19, Connor decided to move there. Went there, it was Jazz Fest, which was free, and at Miles Davis was playing, and then I went to the clubs. I, they let me in, I don't know how, but I got in and um, every great blues artist you could imagine was playing up and down different streets and I was like, this is it for me. So I moved there when I was 22. Connor joined Dion Payton's band and soon after formed her own band. We were the house band at the Checkerboard Lounge, which is Buddy Guy's Club. And then we became the house band at the Kingston Mines and that was like 1985. So I played there with him in the 80s and I, uh, the club owner gave me my own night with my band. I didn't even have a band. He's like. I want you to give you Tuesday nights, get a band together, you have a month. I'm like, and I was like 26, and uh, that started it. So how many gigs has Connor played at Kingston Mines? Oh, well over 1,500. And at Kingston Mines, you never know who will walk through the door. Especially back in the 80s and the early 90s, like Mick Jagger, I met him, Herbie Hancock, Aretha Franklin, uh, Bruce Willis, uh, Nicolas Cage, all these actors and musicians whenever they were in Chicago, would go to uh, John Belushi, Dan Aykroyd. They would all come through there. Connor will never forget the night she got to jam with Jimmy Page. He's one of my biggest influences, and I still love Led Zeppelin. So I was just so starstruck. And, and he was so nice and so down to earth. And we spoke to each other, and we had he was just a lovely guy, and uh, but I was just on cloud nine. And I, I wish it was the age of the uh, you know, smartphone so I have video and, and photo, but there's nothing. Social media has been the ultimate game changer for Connor. I took the power kind of out of the hands of the industry and the tastemakers and put it in the hands of the people. So I'm like, you know, if it was up to the people, I know we'd, I would be doing well. So I think that's what this social media did for me. It gave the people a voice. A video on social media led Connor to working with blues rock legend Joe Bonamassa. You know, I was never a big internet person, but it ended up being like my best friend because, uh, you know, even recently Slash put one of my videos on his page. So it keeps, like, these things keep happening. I got into a movie because of it and with Joe. And, I mean, Joe knew about me, but I think that video brought, he's like, oh yeah, okay. And um, that, that's what triggered it. Connor went to Nashville to record 4801 South Indiana Avenue with Joe Bonamassa and Josh Smith. The album debuted number one on the Billboard Blues chart. It was kind of rewarding in the sense that like my perseverance, it paid off. And it also it was like when I was turned down by labels or when I was overlooked at festivals, or whatever, it was kind of like saying, no, you're all right. And Connor doesn't take her rise to the top for granted. I'm really humbled by it too, you know. And, and my son and my daughter, they're like, Ma, you made history, you know? And it's like, well, I guess I kind of did. For Blues Rock Review, I'm Pete Francis.